morning. Welcome to Beacon Light Missionary Baptist Church's virtual worship service. I'm Pastor Clarence Spurk, and we're so glad you're here on this first Sunday of the new year. As a reminder, if you have a prayer request, please put it in our, submit it to our chat session, and we will pray for you during our prayer service. We encourage you to sit back, enjoy the service, sing along with us, pray for us, and just celebrate with us on this new day. As a reminder, this is Communion Sunday. So if you have not grabbed your cracker or bread and drink, please do so during the service so you can join us at the end of service for a communion service. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. I thank you, Lord, for just being you, Father. I thank you, Lord, for blessing us with another year, Father. We know that the change of the calendar does not change the situations in the world, Father, but we pray that this gives us a new opportunity to do better. And Father, I just pray for each and every one who has joined this service today, Lord. I, I ask blessings upon all the participants, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, that we be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. We'll begin with a selection from Sister Phyllis Morrison. God has blessed us to be able to walk into another year. There were some people who were here on December 31st that didn't make it to January 1st. And he brought us through 2020. Some of us had to deal with COVID-19. Some of us did not. Some of us had other things to deal with. Some of us didn't have anything out of the ordinary to deal with. But through it all, God still showed himself faithful. <clears throat> My testimony simply is that no one has ever cared for me like Jesus. life would sing a song if I have a testimony if I have anything at all it's this no one ever cared for me like Jesus his faithful hand has kept me all this way. When I'm old and gray and all my days are numbered on this earth, let it be known in him alone my joy was found. Oh, my joy, my joy. Let my children tell their children. Let this be their memory. That all my treasure was in heaven. And you were everything to me. Jesus. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. His faithful hand has held me all this way. When I'm old and gray and all my days are numbered on this earth, let it be known. In Him alone my joy was found. Oh, I found Joy. And through it all, 
I'm still in love He's still enough for me Still all I want He's still my everything Because no one ever cared for me like you Your faithful hand has held me all this way When I'm old and gray and all my days I'm numbered on this earth, let it be known In you alone, my joy was found Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Morrison. Thank you very much for that excellent selection. It's time for the message, y'all. It's time for the message. And today we're coming from, well, today our topics is going to be a new year and what a new year brings. Amen. And our text comes from 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Chapter 5, verse 17. Amen. I would say when you find it, say amen, but I really can't hear you. So I just have to take it based on faith that you have arrived at your destination. 2 Corinthians 5, chapter 17. And this is Paul, the Apostle Paul, talking to the church in Corinth. And it's a message to all of us. And in this one verse, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Paul says, therefore, if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creation or new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. As we start this new, new year, Many of us, we are tempted to live in the past, but this is a new opportunity for us to move forward. Yes, we reflect on last year. We reflect on the missteps that were taken, the mistakes that were made during the last year, but we also celebrate the successes of our past and previous years. And we thank God for the victories that we've had in our lives. But we can't live victoriously on past blessings alone. This is a new year. And although the change in the calendar does not make things different, but it gives us an opportunity to commit to make changes. You know, many of us do resolutions, a new year resolutions of of things we want to change in the new year. And that's why you'll see many people uh, commit to going to the gym, renewing their gym membership in the new year, because I'm gonna start off right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start exercising right. I'm, I'm gonna start eating right. But it's so interesting that as that January fades, our participation kind of fades also. We, we get lost and we slip into what we're used to doing. So today I come to you with a message of a few items that I pray that we can claim in this new year. Opportunities that we can tweak some things in our spiritual lives in this new year. Opportunities to make ourselves a more complete person, a, a better servant for God, to be used by God to serve God's people. I come to you with that type of message today. So let us pray as we begin. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to share your word. I thank you, Lord, for 
or just your spirit, Lord, just that lives within us, Lord. I, I thank you and I pray that the ears and eyes of those listening, Lord, just we just pray that you make this acceptable in your sight for their benefit in Jesus' name. Amen. A brand new year. Minister Tatum has already shared scripture from Philippians 3.13. Brother, I did not count myself to as apprehended. That's a mindset that we need to have. Paul had a mindset that even though he knew where his final destination was, even though he knew he was serving God, he did not act like he had already obtained the goal, but he kept on pressing forward because he knew that if he acted like he had already arrived, that he would be less effective for God. So therefore he had the attitude in Philippians 3, 13 and 14, brother, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward for those things which are ahead. I press forward. I press towards the goal of the prize of the call in Christ Jesus, the call of God in Christ Jesus. That was Paul's attitude. And I think that we need to adopt that attitude. We need to act like we still have work to do. We need to act like we still uh, can contribute in some way. We need to act like that we are not a finished product because in reality, we are all in a process of becoming like Christ. We have not arrived. And on this side of glory, we will not arrive. But if we ever think we have arrived, we become less effective. So there's a few items I'd like to share with you today, some things that I pray that we can claim in this new year. Number one, we can increase our level of faith in this new year. Or we can develop a brand new faith in this new year. And, and we need to develop a faith centered in Christ. There's a lot of things that we have faith in, my brothers and sisters. But where is our faith in Christ during difficult times? Where is our dependence on Christ when evil is all around us and has surrounded us? Where is our dependence on Christ? And I like what Hebrews says in verse 12, in chapter 12, verse 2, said, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down on the right hand of the throne of God. Why do we celebrate Jesus Christ? Because he is the author and finisher of our faith. He was the one that God sent. God's only son, so that we might be delivered. So therefore, I pray that we can increase our faith in him. Paul certainly had, had that, that, that mindset that my faith is centered on Christ because I understand who Christ is. Now, if we look at Paul, we have to realize that he was not always that way. As a matter of fact, he had a little name change. His name was Saul, and he was a Pharisee. He was one of those in opposition to Jesus Christ. He did not believe that Jesus Christ was the son of God. He did not believe that this carpenter's son from a backwood country was the son of God. He did not believe that Jesus was Christ. And he did everything in his power to stamp out Christianity among the people. But then he had that fateful journey on that road to Damascus, that journey where he was made blind so that he could see the light and he could see that Jesus Christ was real. Therefore, his life changed right then. No longer was he persecuting Christians, but he became a Christian. And the thing about Paul, God used his unique capabilities to spread the gospel beyond Israel, beyond Judah, into further lands. God did that with Paul. So therefore, I know that God can do that with us. 
Not only do we need a faith that is centered in Christ, but we need a faith that is centered in Christ and works for Christ. Let's look at James chapter 2, verse 17. James chapter 2, verse 17. Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith with my works or by my works. If we have faith in Christ, we need to show that faith through our works for Christ. Amen? Every one of us has a way to contribute. And every one of us, and my prayer is that we will increase our, our, our contributions for the, to the work of Christ, through the service of mankind. I pray that we can make a difference. You know, sometimes people can look, look at us or even our own members, we can look at ourselves as Beacon Light and say, well, we're a small church. What can we do? Well, my brothers and sisters, I wanna share with you what you've done in the past. You have contributed to many causes. You have served in, 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 in many food lines. You have done this work. You have made major contributions. You have clothed people when they were naked. You have fed people when they were hungry. You have prayed with people when they were in need. Yes, we can, a faith that works for Christ. It is not the works that gets us into heaven, but it is, it is the works that are an outcome of our faith and our devotion to Jesus Christ. So that's my prayer in this new year, not only that we have a faith centered in Christ, but we have a faith that works for Christ. And I got one more. We have a faith that lives for Christ. We have a faith that lives for Christ. Hebrews 10, 38 says, the just shall live by faith. And that faith is being able to, to press on in spite of what it might look like to us. A faith that lives for Christ. And I can't think of a better illustration than what we see in Hebrews chapter 11, which we considered the hall of faith, the Hebrew hall of faith. When you look at chapter 11 of Hebrews, it, it talks about Abel. By faith, Abel offered up a more excellent sacrifice unto God than Cain. By faith, Enoch was translated so that he should not see death. By faith, Noah built an ark. Even before it had even rained, God told him that it was going to rain. And Noah and his family began the building process on an ark by faith. By faith, Abraham left home and went to a place he had never been to before. By faith, he went to the land of promise that God had prepared for him, think about it. Where would Abraham have been or where would we be right now if Abraham said, no, Lord, I'm gonna stay home because I, I, I'm not familiar uh, with that area. I, I, I can't find it in my map app. I, I, I don't know the directions. I, I don't know the climate. Just think of how, how this world would have been different if it had not been Abraham who left home and stepped out on faith and followed God and went to a land that was promised to him and promised to the children of Israel. And through that faith, we are heirs to the promise. And that's not all Abraham did, but Abraham showed us how to sacrifice because he was willing to sacrifice his own son. But God had a ram in the bush. Just when you think that you only have enough for yourself and can't share with somebody else, God will provide for each and every one of us. And, and God did not only bless Abraham by faith, but he blessed his wife by faith, by faith, Sarah. What did she do? She conceived and delivered a child way past her bearing years. By faith, it talks about Moses by faith, how he was spared as a baby. It talks about Moses by faith how he stepped up to Pharaoh and said, I'm not your daughter's son. And yet, by faith, Moses led the children of Israel out of captivity. 
even to the brink of the Red Sea where God did his work. So by faith, to live by faith, is to expect that God can do the miraculous, that God can deliver when we cannot figure it out by faith. Lord, you do it. I don't have a solution anymore, Lord. Lord, I've tried everything I can do. Lord, I, I'm calling on you, Lord. By faith is when the members call the prayer warriors and say, I, I got a problem. I need some help. I, I can't bear this burden alone. By faith, that's when we call up our, our faithful friends. You know what? By faith, we know who not to call during those times. We know who not to call, but we know who to call during those times. And can you pray for me? This is a situation that's going on in my life. And sometimes you don't even need to tell the situation. Just call them the prayer warriors and say, I just need you to pray for me. I got something going on that I just can't handle. Pray for me that I will be delivered. Pray for me that God's will will be done. Pray for me. Pray for me. What does the song say? Somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind, took the time and prayed for me. So in this new year, let us just increase our faith in God and expect God will allow us to do the miraculous. God will allow us to, to become more of what he wants us to be. Let us step out on faith in the year 2021. Also, we need to do for this new year, we need to have a new service, a new service for the Lord, a new service that allows us to follow Christ. Mark chapter 8, at the 34th verse, Jesus said this to his disciples when he had called the people to himself. With his disciples also, he said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel's sake will save it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul. That was put into action later on in that chapter when Jesus came across a rich young ruler, a young man who had had a privileged life. He knew all about Christ. And he said, what must I do to follow you? Jesus said, sell everything you have and come follow me. Because Jesus knew the one thing that that young man could not do. That man had lived a life of privilege so long that he could not see a way of not having the pleasure, the pri privileges that he had in his life. So therefore he walked away sadly. And his disciples were disappointed. And they're thinking, Lord, if, if he can't do it, what's, what's in it for the rest of us? But see, God knows. God knows that don't be surprised if you'll be tempted with that one thing that you feel like you cannot <laughs> do away with. To follow Christ, we have to sacrifice. To serve for Christ, we have to sacrifice. Sacrifice our own desires, sacrifice our own, own wants, sacrifice our own resources. That's my prayer, that we can focus more on Christ and less on ourself. And if we do that, the last point is we'll have a new joy. If we do all that, we will have a new joy. Joy because we have been delivered. Joy because we have been delivered. Colossians 1.13 says, he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed unto us the kingdom of the son of his love. Think about it. We serve a God who has taken us from where we thought we were to where he wants us to be. And he is not done with us yet. There was a song that was sung long ago. 
please be patient with me because God is not done with me yet. But when God is through with me, I shall come forth as pure gold. When God is through with me, I shall come forth as pure gold. Isn't that interesting? The joy of someone who can acknowledge that they are not there yet, that God is still working in their lives. The joy of someone who can acknowledge that, Lord, I still need you in my life. Lord, I, I, be patient with me. Lord, I'm trying my best, but Lord, please, I know that in the end, you will deliver me. And in the end, I will be like pure gold. Now, let's talk about that pure gold. Gold, pure gold. Gold is gold, but pure gold. gold. The greater the purity, the more of the um, bad stuff has been eliminated from it, has been filtered from it. So if we are going to be pure gold, that means some things have to be taken away from us. And what the songwriter was saying, please be patient with me because God is not through with me yet. He's still refining me. He's still pressing me. He's still eliminating from me the things that need to be eliminated. And once we get to that point that we know that God is working with us, we can have a new joy. Once we know that we are not a finished product, but we are a work in progress, we can have a new joy. You know, you see those signs sometimes in the road or see some signs someplace when they're uh, in reconstructing somewhere or doing some work someplace. It says work in progress. And usually when we see that that work in progress. We we know that uh, uh, it doesn't look like it's going to look in the end. We know that it is a work in progress. We might see exposed things that shouldn't ordinarily be exposed. We we might see things happening that are not aesthetically pleasing to us, are pleasing to us, and we realize that 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 it's a work in progress. And and I think we all should bear that sign that says a work in progress. We're we're not there yet. We 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 don't always know the right words to say. We don't always know the right things to do. We're not there yet. You might see in us some flaws, but we are not there yet. But when God is through with us. Then you will see the joy in us. Then you will see the, 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 the person that God wants us to be. And we shall come forth as true gold. As true gold. Just a few points today of what we can become once we follow Christ and dedicate our life to him. We can have a new faith. We can have a new service and we can have a new sense of joy. So as we begin this new year, let us make a difference in this new year. We've come this far by faith, my brothers and sisters. Nine months being disturbed from our normal activities to the point that we realize some things that we used to do don't matter anymore. Uh, we have embraced new ways of doing them. I dare say in this new year, I pray that we can realize some things that we did in our Christian life, we realize that we didn't do them the way we could have done them, but then we realize that God has given us a new way to do them. God has refreshed our vision, refreshed our spirit, refreshed our work. And my prayer is that in 2021, that we will devote ourselves to that and not let it be just a January resolution but let us carry through January, February, and on and on and on. You know, there is something in the diet world where they said people take fad diets. And that's when they embrace something because it's worked for somebody else. But the real change comes when you make a lifestyle choice and a lifestyle change. That's when lasting change can happen. 
So I'm asking each and every one of us to look at our lifestyle, to look at our spiritual lifestyle and make the changes that we need to make to be successful in Christ in this new year. God bless you. And I pray that this message has served both to inform and to inspire us to reach towards higher heights in the new year. God bless you. Preacher.